Today we are going to talk about Warren Buffett's best investment advice, which is to buy index funds. So we're going to talk about what are index funds, uh, why the S and P 500 in particular, and we're also going to dig into the Berkshire Hathaway annual report to look at exactly what Warren Buffett is saying uh, to his investors and how he himself is actually investing. We're also going to talk about concepts like dollar cost averaging and how actually spreading out your investment into the S&P 500 is the exact execution or exact way that Warren Buffett would himself invest into the index fund rather than buying it all at once. Uh, so we're also going to talk about diversification that index funds offer you that individual stocks don't let you have. Um, and we're also going to dig into some specific quotes from the annual report that Sp Warren Buffett says and what it means. Uh, lastly, we're going to talk about what all this means for you. So what exactly are the action items? Uh, in a future podcast and article, we're going to talk about how specifically different kind of ETFs and different vehicles can allow you to get this kind of exposure. And if you want to invest in the S&P 500, uh, as Warren Buffett recommends, we're going to show you a way to do so without any commissions. So first off, uh, Warren Buffett is probably the most successful and most celebrated investor of the 20th century. And going into the 21st century, he's already doing really well. Um, of course, you could attribute to his success due to uh, picking the right stocks that outperform the market. Yeah, that's true. But actually, during his lifetime, the stock market overall has actually gone up quite a bit. You know, despite all the dot com and financial crisis that happened, if you look at a chart of the S and P five hundred going back the last you know fifty hundred years, it actually goes up quite a bit. So I'm just looking at an S and P five hundred chart. You know, right now, just starting from nineteen fifty, which is kind of roughly the time period. Uh, when Warren Buffett kind of started getting into the markets, the S&P 500 number-wise was well below 50. You know, I'm looking at this chart, it looks like it's below 30. And, you know, by 1990, it was close to 400. Uh, of course, into 2000, the dot-com, it was to close, closing up on 1,500. So we're talking from 30 to 1,500. Uh, in the span of 50 years. Now, during 2000 and 2010, you know, people call that kind of like the lost decade-ish because it basically, the S&P 500 basically went nowhere due to kind of the, the whipsaw of the financial crisis. But if you look at where we're at at two, 2015, we, we went over 2000. And so uh, in 2016, end of 2016, we're, you know, we're closing up on 2200. And so you compare that 2200 with 30, you know, back in 1950, that those are substantial gains. We're talking many, 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 like 100x, perhaps. Almost 100x. If you take that 30, you add, add um, two zeros to the end, you get 3,000. We're not too far from that. We're actually at 2200. So that's quite a bit. Um, and so Warren Buffett's investment strategy, his best investment advice to anybody uh, is to buy the five S and P five hundred, not to buy individual stocks, uh, but to buy the index overall. That way, you get exposure to every kind of stock that's pretty much out there. And we're going to talk about all the different sectors that the S and P five hundred covers. And when you buy the S and P five hundred, you get exposure to all that, and it's diversified. So if any one company or any one sector lags, your portfolio won't get affected that much. But the in the exact strategy that Warren Buffett advises is not necessarily to just buy all at once. You see, if you buy all at once, you could buy at the wrong time. You know, maybe you bought in 2007 before the financial crisis, and then you would have, you know, basically lost half your, your net worth uh, within a, a couple of years. And so timing the market is always something that Warren Buffett never said he was the best at. Uh, he never claims to be great at. But for the average investor, he recommends a strategy called dollar cost averaging. Um, and you want to do that into a low cost index fund. So the S&P 500 is an index. You want a fund that tracks the index. And so the one specifically that he recommends 
is the Vanguard uh, S&P 500 index. Uh, and he recommends that because of its low expense ratio. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But first, you know, what is dollar cost averaging? Uh, dollar cost averaging is basically investing a set amount. Let's say it's $100 a month. And you do that investment over a period of time. So, for example, let's say that in the next year you invest $100 uh, in your first month. Let's say it's January. Uh, you invest another $100 in February and another $100 in March. And you do this automatically. And some brokerages will allow you to set it up so that it kind of like automatically deducts, you know, automatically takes it from your bank account and puts it into the uh, S&P 500 fund. And it does so with, it, uh, with an exact dollar amount. Now note that dollar cost averaging is different from buying 100 shares every month. Uh, buying 100 shares every month is going to result in a different dollar amount. So let's say uh, the S&P 500 is not trading at this, but let's say it's a, a dollar. If you invest 100 shares, that's $100. $100. But let's say you know in month number two, the S&P 500 becomes $2. Well, if you buy 100 shares, that $2 becomes, you know, $200. So month one, you invested $100, but month two, you invested $200. You're not investing the same dollar amount every month. That's not the strategy that Buffett recommends. Instead, he recommends investing a fixed dollar amount. So instead, if let's say the S&P 500 were to go from $1 to $2, that first month you buy 100 shares, but that second month you only buy 50 shares. That way, 50 times 2 is 100. You're still investing $100. So that's the key point with what uh, dollar cost averaging is. From a dollar perspective, you're investing the same dollar amount every month. Not the same share counts, but the same dollar amount. So this strategy basically lets you spread out your exposure to the index over a period of time so that even if you enter at the wrong time, You'll end up buying more shares as the market drops, and as the market goes up, you'll actually buy less shares. So over time, you're just always giving the same dollar amount, and this strategy helps to kind of give you that effect of buying low, buying more at a lower price, and buying less at a higher price, and eventually you sell when, when things go up. But of course, his strategy is buy and hold, but anyone who wants to shell, sell, you can of course share, sell um, when it goes up. Uh, so this is his strategy of investing in the index fund to dollar cost average your way in. Now, of course, we want to answer the question, you know, what is an index fund? You know, we talked about before how the index fund is kind of like an average of all the stocks in the entire market. Uh, we're talking about various sectors. And of course, there are many different kind of index funds. There are Dow Jones Industrial Averages and Index. And of course, there are funds that track that. Uh, Dow Jones being kind of, kind of like the 30 largest blue chip type companies in the US. They're kind of massive. Uh, S&P 500 is the one that he recommends. These are 500 large cap stocks across all kinds of sectors. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to cover that in a bit. Uh, another index is the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is tech focused. So a lot of the technology companies uh, go up and down. They experience more volatility. That's the NASDAQ. And the Russell is a small cap index. And the small cap index is, you know, you know, a collection of 2000 small companies. And of course, the volatility there is even more so. You know, of these four popular US indices, the one that Buffett recommends to follow is the S&P 500 index. So what's so good about the S&P 500? Uh, we actually have another dedicated podcast on episode 11, What is the S&P 500? Where we talk, out, talk about exactly what it is and the exact breakdown. Uh, but, but just here as a high level, the S&P 500 basically gives you to exposure to sectors like technology, services, financials, healthcare, consumer goods, and industrial goods. So this covers basically the entire economy. Uh, when I talk about technology, we, we're talking about Google and Facebook. Services, we're talking about Home Depot, like your house, Walmart, massive retail, Disney, 
on everything that they own. Amazon, of course, they sell pretty much everything. Uh, financials. The financial sector, you think about all the banks like Wells Fargo, Visa, Bank of America. And of course, you have the, the investment banks like Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan Stanley. Uh, consumer goods. Well, Coke and Pips, Pepsi basically own every kind of soft you know, dr- beverage drink you can think of. Well, everyone knows about Apple being one of the top, top uh, consumer tech companies. And uh, industrial goods, General Electric, and every, all the appliances that make, they make to power everybody's home. And if you go to finviz.com, you can obtain kind of like a visualization chart of what is the S&P 500 breakdown and what, what are all these sectors. Um, and it's, it's kind of nice to look at it from a visual perspective, and we'll include a link to it in this podcast. So you can see visually like which sectors are bigger than, than others. You know, For example, Apple uh, takes up a larger portion of the S&P 500 than, say, you know, a smaller company like UPS. So when Warren Buffett tells you to dollar cost average into the S&P 500, it's because the S&P 500 gives you that level of diversification so you don't have to worry about specific stock risk. So when a company issues more shares or, you know, the CEO, you know, somehow, you know, is caught in some kind of fraud or, if, you know, so you say for a biotech company, like there's some like news about FDA. Th- these are these are all things that will drive a stock price like up 10% in just one day. You'll never see the S&P 500 go up 10% in one day. Um, in fact, there were actually circuit breakers put in place that'll kind of prevent it uh, from getting there closer to the five and seven percent. And over time, that, that that may change, but you won't see massive swings in the index as you would with specific stocks. And that's why Warren Buffett recommends the index fund, the S and P five hundred. And that's also one of the reasons why we trade the S and P five hundred um, at, at Lifestyle Trading One Hundred and One. Now let's take a look at some of Buffett's words, and I'll I'll include a link to the annual report, the 2013 annual report where Buffett talks about his investment strategy and what he's actually doing in his own will. Uh, but here's here's a quote. Uh, Buffett says in, in this report, the main danger is that the, the timid or beginning investor will enter the market at a time of extreme exuberance and then become disillusioned when paper losses occur. So the main danger is that the beginner investor is going to enter the market when there's extreme exuberance. What he means is that most people don't enter the market when things are bad. They enter it when they're they're good. You know, they're going to invest more money when they hear their friends saying, oh, I just earned like, you know, X amount of money in the stock market. And then people think to themselves, oh, uh, you know, maybe I should get into the stock market too. And so they're, they're in a way entering potentially at a, on a late stage. It, it could still be a good time, but what he really means is that the best time to invest is when there, there's blood in the streets. You know, when other people are doing bad, that's when you want to enter. Um, and of course, the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009 was a perfect example. You know, the index went up well over 50% uh, since then, and it's because there was blood in the streets, and that was the ultimate time. And actually, a lot of the times when Warren Buffett bought, uh, he made it public that he was buying. Uh, And so you could have easily just followed his advice, and I'm sure many people did. Um, And if you still held on, you would have been up quite a bit. Um, Here's another quote, quote number two. In the 20th century, the Dow Jones Industrial Index advanced from 66 to 11,497, paying a rising stream of dividends to boot. The 21st century, so that was the 20th century, it went from 66 to almost 12,000. The 21st century will witness further gains, almost certain to be substantial. The goal of the non-professional should not be to pick winners. Neither he nor his helpers can do that but should rather be to own a cross-section of businesses that in aggregate are bound to do well. A low-cost S&P 500 index will achieve this goal. So instead of picking individual stocks, just focus on the overall market. The overall market went up, I don't even know what percentage that is. If you divide 12,000 by 66, I mean, 
that's basically like 200x almost almost 200x and so that happened in the 20th century now in the 21st century you know hey last century was was 200x hey maybe this century is probably even more so i mean you think about all the technological advances and uh, all those all the improvements in terms of infrastructure and technology and transportation uh you know 200 uh, is is could be let's say 100x hey not bad so i mean there's significant room as long as you're just exposed to the overall market and you don't freak out with any particular investment so a third quote from warren buffett quote my advice to the trustee uh, this is him talking about his will uh, that my advice to the trustee could not be more simple put 10 percent of the cash in short-term government bonds and 90 percent in a very low cost s p 500 index fund i suggest vanguards i believe the trust's long-term results from this policy will be superior to those attained by most investors whether pension funds institutions or individuals who employ high fee managers so what he's saying here is instead of paying somebody a fee to kind of pick stocks uh, a more effective strategy at least effective strategy that he's going to do is to put 90 percent in a low-cost s p 500 index fund uh, so you all know about those 401k um, allocation recommendations where you have 40 percent in stock 30 percent in bonds and x percent in emerging mar markets and and stuff like that he's saying you know what screw that just put everything 90 percent basically in the s p 500 index fund he doesn't even give room for any of that other stuff uh and the amount that he's putting in government bonds just 10 percent 90 percent is just s p 500 index fund and average investors like yourself can can do exactly this you could do exactly what warren buffett himself is doing for his will so those are three quotes from Warren Buffett in his annual report from Berkshire Hathaway. Um, and this is a report that lots of investors all over the world kind of dig into every single time he re releases it. Um, and the, the most important thing here is what does it mean for you? What is the takeaway? The takeaway here is that you should buy low-cost index funds. And there are multiple ways to do this. You can do this directly with Vanguard. Uh, and they have two shares of classes. They have an uh, admiral class and uh, an investor class. Of course, you need at least ten thousand dollars to invest in order to get access to the admiral class. The admiral class just gives you uh, a cheaper expense ratio of point zero five percent. And he, Rowan Buffett, recommends Vanguard because they have a, a fee that's lower than the ind the industry. So the industry or the average index fund has something closer to 0.25%, uh, whereas Vanguard charges 0.05%. So it's about one-fifth of what the overall you know, average index fund charges. Uh, and that's for that specific S&P 500 fund. If you do other kinds of mutual funds, they charge closer to 1.25%, uh, which is like uh, more than 20 times the expense ratio of the S&P 500 fund that the Vanguard guys do. Um, but yeah, so step one, buy a low-cost index fund. You could either do that directly with Vanguard. Uh, I, I, if you have $10,000, I recommend the Admiral shares. That way you get the 0.05% expense ratio. Uh, that's if you do it directly with Vanguard. Um, but if you don't do it directly with Vanguard, you have like your other brokerage, say E-Trade, uh, Share Builders, you know, um, Fidelity, uh, Interactive Brokers. You want to buy... Uh, one of these two tickers, SPY, which is what we trade commonly, or alternatively, actually Vanguard came out with their own ETF. It's called VOO. So these are the two ETFs, SPY and VOO. Uh, if you put them side by side, they, they're basically the same. If you, if you really want to kind of crack peanuts here, like the VOO, the one by Vanguard, is actually a, like slightly better than the S&P. Uh, better than the SPY, um, but they're basically the same. Uh, performance should not be a reason uh, to choose one over the other, although VOO is just slightly better. And that only matters if you have like lots and lots and lots of money. But either one should do fine over time. 
Uh, and the second strategy, so that's the first one, buy the index fund, buy SPY, buy VOO, or open an account with Vanguard and buy their Admiral shares. Uh, the other one is to dollar cost average over time. Don't buy all at once. You can set up something that's auto deduction from your bank account. Um, if you have uh, an account with Vanguard, you could do that without paying commissions per trade. So each month you don't have to pay that commission. If you do this dollar cost average strategy with SPY, the ETF, uh, that's exchange traded fund, or the VOO, uh, and, and you, you use uh, you know the traditional brokers like interactive brokers or e trade and stuff like that, you're gonna ex you're gonna get a cost a, a trade commission each time, and that varies. It could be anywhere between seven to ten dollars on average. Um, places like Speed Trader maybe charging it like four ninety five or five dollars, but it's roughly in that range five to fifteen dollars uh, per trade. So if you want to do it every month and you, you want to do that dollar cost average strategy that Buffett recommends, it's going to cost you a bit over time. So that's something to be aware of. So that's the second strategy to, to buy it in pieces over time, dollar cost average. The third one and is to hold. Uh, and so if you follow these three steps over time, like over the span of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you're going to do really well because the overall index according to Buffett, is going to do well. Um, and that's just that's just like the nature of the markets and a reflection of the growing economy. So this strategy of buying a low-cost index fund and, and buying in pieces over time, dollar-cost averaging and holding, this is something that Warren Buffett tells to uh, all kinds of people, including LeBron James uh, and all, all kinds of celebrities out there that he advises. He advises this particular strategy to... Uh, buy in pieces the index fund and you're going to do well. Now, some of you might be might be thinking about, oh, that low cost index fund. If I if I do that auto kind of auto investing once every month with Vanguard, but what if I don't want to use Vanguard? What if I want to use like, you know, E-Trade or interactive brokers and I want to buy SPY and VOO? How can I avoid that, you know, that trade commission that's going to happen every single month? Uh, well, actually, there's a trick to it. Uh, if there's a there's a, a certain service you can use, that if you want to buy these uh, index funds at zero dollar cost, you can do it. Um, it's going to require a special brokerage. I'm going to tell you which brokerage that is, um, and we'll talk about that in a separate podcast. But for now, the main lesson is to focus on SPY, VOO, or if you have over ten thousand dollars and you want to set up direct. Uh, deposit every single month. You can do so directly with Vanguard by going to Vanguard.com and specifically looking at their admiral shares of the S&P 500 index fund. In our next episode, we're going to dive more into how you can get that free commission if you de decide to auto deposit um, and invest into the S&P 500. We're also going to dive more into the differences between the different share classes of the Vanguard fund. Um, as well as the Vanguard VOO, and we'll, we're going to talk more about the expense ratios that are involved in buying the S&P 500. Uh, for now, that's it. This is the um, S&P 500 we're talking about and Warren Buffett's best and favorite investment advice to buy the index funds. Signing off, this is Silver Surfer, and we'll see you guys next time.